Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make an amazing pizza base just using almond flour and two different kinds of cheese. This is popularly known as a fathead pizza base, and I'm going to show you how to make it foolproof and delicious, it works every time, you'll love it. I would advise one pizza is shared between two people, while almond flour is a fantastic substitute, those nut flours do add up in carbs. Lovely fresh salad on the side, or go through the effort of making two balls of fathead dough, you and your partner can both have your favorite toppings, and then there's leftovers. Who doesn't love leftover pizza the next day? The making of the dough is actually really easy. You're just gonna have three bowls ready. In the one, all your dry ingredients, which you should combine well. In the second, your grated mozzarella and the soft cheese, cream cheese, full fat. And in the third bowl, just a whisked egg. Now here's where it gets tricky. The timing is really important. I'm going to melt this in the microwave, the cheese, for about one minute, 30 seconds. At the same time, get your dry ingredients into a mini food processor. The technique of combining this fathead dough can be done by hand, but I've found it much easier in a food processor. Immediately after the cheese has come out of the microwave, just give it a gentle stir and we're going to pour it into the food processor and blitz while it's still in its melted state. Mozzarella is quite a stringy cheese, so you may need to remove the lid halfway through and just kind of use a knife to sort of cut away the stringy bits of mozzarella that might wrap around your blade. Speaking of mozzarella, you can use fresh mozzarella. Just be mindful though that when you melt it in the microwave, a lot of excess wateriness sort of runs off. You should drain that before you blitz it with your almond flour mixture, otherwise the mixture will be far too wet to work with. I've actually used store-bought grated mozzarella today. Uh, there is a trace amount of potato starch in that kind of ready grated variety. Using it will depend how strict you are on keto. That small amount of potato starch doesn't bother me at all. Once your cheese and your almond flour is combined, we're just going to add the egg and continue to blitz until it comes together. Transfer the mixture into a bowl and we're going to just allow it to cool a little in the fridge. I'd say anything between 5 and 20 minutes. It just makes it so much easier to work with. While your dough is chilling in the fridge, preheat your oven. I'll also put a pizza stone in there just to give it a bit of an authentic vibe. Tip your dough out onto a sheet of parchment and just cover with a second sheet of parchment. And we're going to flatten it using a rolling pin into a pizza. Try and aim for the same size as your dish that's going onto the pizza uh, stone. Peel off the top layer of parchment and we're going to slide this onto the tray that goes over the pizza stone. So you can use your pastry scraper just to lift the ends here on the side. Don't worry if it's not perfect. It's rustic and it looks exactly like something that's made at home with love. I always just trim away any excess paper. I don't know why I do this. I guess we all have weird habits. Right, so that now goes into the oven. I always advise rotating your tray halfway through. Once it's done its initial time in the oven, you can just spoon over a little of the delicious roasted marinara sauce. That recipe is on my website. It's also in my new book. Um, and you'll love it. It's just a beautiful sauce, free of any hidden sugars. Got a lovely authentic flavor of dried oregano, a bit of dried thyme, and loads of garlic. My husband was craving pepperoni, so I've got a nice little selection of chorizo and spicy pepperoni for his pizza tonight. I'm actually making my own pizza tonight. I'm not going to film that one, but I quite like seafood on a pizza. So we're both going to have half a pizza tonight each with delicious leftovers for tomorrow. Just a little more cheese, and then it gets finished in the oven. Oh, that smells amazing. Just needs a bit of chopped parsley. There's garlic in the marinara sauce. That does a great job of sort of balancing that out. And then you can just slice and serve as you would a normal pizza. That's it. For more details on this recipe, what I used in the dough, oven temperatures, etc., please visit fatsoflife.co.uk and search for Fathead Pizza Dough Base. The recipe for the pizza-based dough, as well as that delicious marinara sauce, is in my new book, Keto Kitchen. It's available on Amazon and most bookstores in the UK. 
rolls out worldwide on the 1st of September. Here's a sneak peek. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and follow me on social media. I'll see you again soon. <sighs> there tends to be quite a bit of excess. This is all skew. Are you finished talking? <laughs> That's all crap. Okay, wait, okay, one more time, one more time. Please don't nod or do this or do anything because it just distracts me. Keep your happiness inside. I can read the back of the Jamison bottle now. <laughs> just go. The dough for this to the dough for the the dough for the the dough the dough for the the dough No that's crap, I don't like the word gorgeous. No. Make a, this is very popularly popularly popularly. While the dough's Why is it so dark all of a sudden? While your dough is chilling in the oven, just get a piece While your dough is chilling in the oven. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Two just to give it a little bit of authentic that's fine. <laughs>